give us a sense. You know, we didn't fully connect the dots for people. You know, you're talking about glucose as one of the primary fuel sources of cancer. Give us a diagnosis of our current modern industrialized lifestyle and really help the folks that are listening today connect the dots of what are the primary sources of, you know, large amounts of calories containing glucose inside of our our lifestyle. And also let's get into, you know, beyond diet, let's just talk a little bit about, you know, sedentary lifestyle and the amount of stress that's there and how those things play into it as well. Well, now, now we're back on the prevention side. So all of those things that you just mentioned are critical for preventing cancer from happening in the first place. I mean, we are, we're only concerned about treating it after you have cancer. But if you don't have cancer, you don't have to ever worry about the kinds of treatments. Or if you can live a diet and lifestyle that would put keep your mitochondria healthy so that you don't get a transition from oxfos to fermentation, then the probability of getting cancer will be significantly reduced. So, but this is the this is the the balance act you have to you have to recognize. How do we know that? How do I how do we know that if we have the right diet and lifestyle that we will significantly reduce our risk for ever having to deal with cancer in the first place? And we know that from our historic evaluation of tribes, human um, tribes that live according to their uh, ancient ways. And there have been a number of people who have investigated aboriginal peoples. Uh, these are peoples who still live in uh, non-Western side. Uh, they're, they're in jungles or they're in desert or they're in the, 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 the Arctic. Modern or day hunter gatherer tribes. Yeah, like Inuits from, from Canada and Alaska, you, you have, well, now today they're massively unhealthy. A lot of uh, sugar, when they a lot were, of alcohol today, but it wasn't that way yeah, before. Yeah, yeah. So those, tr those, those folks uh, were living, the, in fact, there was co comments that, you know, Inuits, Eskimos uh, never get cancer. And they eat, you know, fatty blubber and they eat whales and they eat seals and they eat fish and they eat this kind of stuff. And they don't eat many vegetables because, you know, where are you going to go and when it's 40 below zero to get to get a, a piece of fruit. But but in, in in the summer, certainly they they could gather some of these things up. Um, but uh, the great physician, um, humanitarian Albert Schweitzer uh, recorded the African tribes uh, had no cancer. A, 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 he looked for 400, 40,000 people were evaluated. He couldn't find any cancer. So what are these guys doing? Uh, they were pretty much following uh, a very very a lot of physical exercise, uh, very low carbohydrate foods that they were eating, um, and, and they had a very different um, uh, diets and lifestyles. So uh, during the Paleolithic period of our past, uh, you know, where did we? We didn't farm. We went. We were hunter gatherers. Hunter. What does that mean? Hunter. You're killing stuff and eating it. You're gathering nuts and berries whenever you could seasonally. Uh, every we we now know from 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 uh, research, most of those folks were always in a state of ketosis, um, what we call nutritional ketosis, where blood sugars are low uh, and ketones are elevated because there's no carbohydrates, very few carbohydrates in our diets. You don't get much carbohydrate eating eating uh, organic meat, uh, internal organs. You don't get much carbohydrates eating natural. Um, you could get a little bit from berries, but they'd be seasonal. Tubers. So you don't really. Yeah, I mean, but you're you're not you're not farming them. So the Neolithic period is when civilization started, basically when we started farming and growing food in a in a in a, in a location where people would gather around the food. But even then, there was a lot of exercise and the kinds of foods that we wheats and corns and rice and this kind of stuff. Um, they were not high glycemic varieties uh, of these foods. We have now made super sweet rice, corn, uh, wheats, and now we've even processed them into called uh, highly processed carbohydrates with zero nutritional benefit, all high carbohydrate. And uh, this, this with, a, with a diet and lifestyle that we have today is absolutely the, uh, the cause of almost all of our chronic diseases. What are they? Type two diabetes, obesity, cardiovascular disease, cancer, dementia. These are all related to diet and lifestyle. Yeah, there's a few guys that might have a genetic predisposition 
to one of these things or another. But the majority of the folks, it's ourselves. And, you know, people blame our genes. Uh, oh, you know, uh, it's not our genes are doing exactly what they evolved to do, store energy. We, we evolved as a species that was hungry all the time. We, we were always tracking down food to, get to, to, to find out we needed to store energy. It's hard to store energy when you're eating only meats and certain vegetables that have very, very few uh, highly processed carbs. So now you take that same metabolism and you throw it into a new environment where you have massive amounts of highly processed carbohydrates, minimal amounts of exercise and energy, and you get fat. All right. The, because we evolved to store energy and the genes that allowed us to survive on the planet as a species are now counterproductive to our health because we're in a totally new environment, killing us uh, and causing an enormous amount of our, our uh, financial resources to be thrown into managing chronic diseases, all most of which are caused by a diet and uh, minimal exercise uh, and, and, and consumption of highly processed foods and it's convenient. Okay. You, how many people are sitting in traffic jams in every major city in this country? We're, uh, 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 rush hour, you're sitting in traffic jams. You're, 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 you're sucking down on a, a high carbohydrate coffee, a muffin. You're, you're driving the car. You get into work. You sit in front of a computer. You run home. The kids are crying. You got to put some, something in the microwave real quick that's highly processed. You give it to the kids. You get childhood obesity. You get chronic diseases. And you start creating all these problems that were very new to our uh, our society. And now you're going to come out with billions of dollars trying to figure out how, how I'm going to stop obesity, how I'm going to stop type 2 diabetes, how I'm going to stop cancer, what am I doing about dementia? And, 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 the, and, we're, and we're, we're not taking charge of what we know we should be doing. So we have a, institutions will come in and say, oh, take that pill, take this pill. We're going to treat you with this and treat you with that. But the real cause of it all, you got to go back to prevention. Okay. And it's hard. I'm not saying this is easy. I mean, the, the way we're running our society today, everybody's on the go all the time. Everybody's just locked into a computer with headsets, walking around with headsets on. I, I mean, I mean, we're, we're just deviated so far uh, in a short period of time, you know, a few hundred years into this new environment. And it's accelerating and massively accelerating uh, with the with the technology that we have making our lives easier and easier, putting us at more and more risk for chronic diseases. And, and, uh, and then you end up with cancer and then you're trying to figure, oh, what's this cancer? You know, the dementia, man, what's all the, that's another epidemic. A a obesity is an epidemic. Dementia is an epidemic. Cancer is an epidemic. And it's all coming from changes, rapid changes in our diet and lifestyle over the last, over the last, uh, you know, several, several decades. Well, well, you chatted about diet and I want to just clarify a couple points there to make sure, you know, that our audience, obviously we've done a lot of episodes on diet. It's not that you're saying that, you know, obviously carbohydrates and sugar can't be a part of a healthy diet. We're really talking about getting those sources from whole foods and making sure that our calorie, total calories from those sources are stayed within reason, which generally, if you avoid ultra processed foods, especially high fructose, sweetened, you know, drinks, you know, ultra concentrated fruit juices, things like that, fast food, if you're generally going to stay away from that and eat and focus on whole foods and good amount of protein, you're going to be okay with the combination of not having a sedentary lifestyle. Would you agree? Well, I, I think it's also the fast food industry as well. I yeah. mean, you got, you got to, you got to, you got to recognize how tasty those things are. I mean, this is like, I mean, we evolved to want glucose. We evolved as a species to like sweet things. And now we have so much of it everywhere. I mean, you take some of those Subway sandwiches or whatever the, you know, these, uh, whatever, whatever these big hero sandwiches I mean, they've got so much sugar in the bread, you can't call it bread, right? So they have to call it a pastry, uh, a confectionery. Um, I mean, that's not natural. But it, man, does it taste good. It's unbelievable. You ever have a McDonald's quarter pounder? You, you tremble while you eat it so damn good. I mean, it's not like we're, we're making foods that people, oh, I don't want to eat that. Oh, are you kidding me? I mean, that stuff is really good stuff. I mean, you wash it down with a big milkshake. Uh, I mean... <laughs> You gotta love it, right? You get those new Domino's pizzas. I mean, they're full of sugar in the in the tomato sauce. I mean, the bread's full of sugar. Everything is full of sugar. But man, does it taste good? Because we evolved to like that stuff. So it's not like because it was rare. Like, it was hard to it, find. Yes, 
And, you know, and then you divide, and then you, our technology allows us to make uh, a sugary, we found a mutation in corn years ago, the, the sugary gene. So uh, the corn kernels could make a lot more sugar. And then you can make sweet corn, right? <laughs> so, so everything is sweet, sweet, sweet. And then you process in the highly fruct, high, high, high fructose corn syrups, and you mix that in with everything else you're eating. And, and every, it's not like this stuff doesn't taste good, man. This stuff is really, really tasty. Sure, which is and, why it's so hard to take a step back from it. Yes. And it does take some level of personal yes. you know, willpower to pull back, especially if we're yeah. addicted. But I will say I mean, this. The temptations, the temptations are everywhere. The temptations are everywhere, but your taste buds do change when you start to shift away from a lot of those foods. And I want to say for anybody who's struggling with it, 100% it's hard. And you start to crave whole and healthy foods. It doesn't mean that I don't like sweets, just like the other other person that's around there. But your tolerance for them shifts. And also, Tony Robbins used to say this back in the day, but nothing tastes as good as being healthy feels. When you feel great, because your sleep is great. Now, diet is tough. And it's one of those things that a lot of people struggle with. And you have to find the diet that you can stick to and you manage calories and make sure you don't overeat, right? And there's a lot of different diets that can work there. One thing I do want to highlight on is that this is also tough, but this does feel like it's a good insurance policy. This is from the work of uh, Sachin Panda, one of the top researchers in sort of uh, circadian rhythm. And he shared this uh, paper the other day looking at... Uh, the role of exercise, it was titled The Role of Exercise in Obesity-Related Cancers. I'll share it over with, uh, with you, the current evidence and biological mechanisms. And essentially, he shared this graphic on Twitter, um, and it was basically saying that exercise is the best, one of the best insurances against cancer. And the premium, just from the evidence of what we have today, is that 30 minutes a day of sweating genuinely makes a difference. Would you agree for a lot of people that in the category of prevention, one of the top things they can do today, in addition to the stuff that we talked about diet, which of course is hard, exercise is hard too, but anybody can start to get more exercise in their life and that will also help them in the prevention against cancer. Yeah, I agree. A anything that you feel that is, you found as a, you know, uh, supportive for you and your lifestyle? Well, yeah, I, th I think, you know, um, well, I'm, I'm at a university where all the kids are young and, uh, they're in the gym jumping around. They all want to look like the Adonis, you know, they're, they're, they're perfect bodies. They're, they're just like, I said, put 50 years and, and life on those bodies and see what happens. <laughs> but, but no, I, I agree. But I, but I think, um, you know, walking is probably one of the best exercises. Yeah. Walking is underrated. Uh, walking is easy because you don't, you don't have to go to a gym. Uh, you can just walk around the block or walk around a reservoir or walk around something. Uh, swim, a guy go, I want to, people want to swim. Swimming is excellent, but you know, you got to go to a swimming pool somewhere. I mean, you're, you're working in an office and now you have to go somewhere, uh, get into a bathing suit, uh, swim around, put your clothes back on. And then, I mean, walking, you don't, you can just, you know, go out and, and do, uh, just walk around. It's a good way to clear your mind. It's a good way to start to focus on on things that you may not have been able to focus on uh, while you were working at the desk and doing your work, um, you know. And and it depends on the kind of of work you're doing. I mean, construction workers, of course, are outside and they're they're they have a lot more activity than some office workers say. But but we're all we're all in the same environment, um, and and we're all challenged by by by, by the same issues. Uh, you know, how, how are we going to try to prevent, again, uh, cancer, uh, also obesity? Because all these things are, are linked, you know, uh, with the smoke anti-smoking campaign, obesity now has moved into, into a, a, a high risk factor for cancer. But obesity is also linked to type 2 diabetes, which is an epi another epidemic. Uh, well, all of that's related to elevated blood sugar and lack of exercise. So you can break it all down to blood sugar and exercise. If your blood glucose levels are too high and you don't exercise, I mean, you're going to get fat and you're going to put yourself at risk for systemic inflammation. And the, the tragedy, the great tragedy I see is, is the little kids uh, that are adolescents, uh, that are, that are preteens are, are getting obese. Um, this should never happen because those poor folks are already are, are shutting their their long-term longevity down. They're going to be dead in their 40s and 50s. 
They're not going to be lived to be 70 and 80. Super They're all going to be dead soon. Not all, but a lot of them uh, are going to die prematurely uh, from this. And they don't think there's a problem with this. And we can't never allow our society to think it's okay to see a little kid that's obese. It's not okay. Okay. Because that, unless you don't care about, you know, health issues. Uh, and then, you know, as you age, you put on weight, uh, mainly because you're not as active as you were when you were young. And the hormones in your body that burn energy become less and less and you start to store, to store fat. So, so, I mean, it's a, it's a lifestyle change, but man, it's, it's, it's really cutting the life. It's really reducing overall survival for a lot of people in our, in our society. And they're saying that some of the kids today being born are never, are not going to live as long as some of the, the, their grandparents say, say, for example. Yeah. So you have a lot of this that has to do, uh, but again, you know, we're focusing on cancer, uh, which is a real deadly, uh, a type of, of situation that causes a tremendous amount of stress on people. And uh, we can manage that. I think we can do a better job than we're doing right now. Hey, YouTube, if you enjoyed what you just saw, keep watching for more great content on how to improve your brain and your life. People need to know what's putting them at risk. And a lot of times they do know, but they really don't have the resources not to do what they're doing. So uh, it's really, it's really, um, I don't know, it's a, it's a tough question.